Also joining the show tonight, big part of a talented backfield over at Hope College. This guy he played a key role in the Dutchman's massive upset over the reigning MIAA champs, Alma, on the road last week. It's Chance Strickland. What's going on, man? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Dude, thank you for coming on, being a trooper, going through, toughing out a late-night class, come right to the yeah. pod. Uh, that's got to be pretty nice, knowing there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel of this. Uh, what class was it, and how long were you trapped in there? It was a, it's a sports management class. And it, okay. It usually okay. runs like, uh, no, it's not bad. It usually runs like three hours, but we had an exam, so it's not bad. But we only went for like, uh, well, I guess we went for like the whole time today, but I enjoy it. It's, it's pretty laid back. It's the, the professor or the teacher is the, the swim coach at Hope. And so okay. he's a super cool guy. So it's, like it's a good environment. It's, it's mostly athletes, so it's a good environment. I like that a lot. Uh, taking care of business in the classroom, I assume. We know you're doing it on the field. Yes, sir. That's part of part of what comes uh, being over there at Hope, man. They they definitely prioritize that. I know that. Uh, but what I also know is that going into this season, this Alma Hope game was something that probably was built up very much so, at least in kind of our spheres, when it comes to the the small school yes. football realm, right? And it's something that uh, that game has really determined the outcome of whoever claims the title in the MIAA the last couple of years. And with that, obviously, comes playoff implications because of the way the playoffs are in Division Three yep. football with your automatic bids and such. With that being said... What was the buildup like going into the game this year, heading into what they call Scotland, USA, my man? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty intense. We uh, I don't know how they schedule the conference stuff, but we knew that like whenever Alma, like whenever that game was, it was going to be like for a pretty important game, obviously. Yeah. And uh, to have it be the first one was <laughs> a lot, and so um, we were all looking forward to it. And so super excited to start conference play because we knew that, like, if we beat them, if we get off on, like, like that start, that it'll be good going forward because they're obviously back-to-back, -back, you know, champs. So they're going to be the toughest team we play in the conference. So that was – it was nerve-wracking, but, like, we were all looking forward to, like, making it happen and being able to start, like, the conference play off that way. Not only did you start conference will play off that way, you started the game – in a dominant fashion, right? And we're going through the tape here just in a little bit. Jimmy and I will later in the episode. But this game gets up to 31 nothing. And I think yeah. when you will go through and actually watch the tape, and I had the chance to tune into to a bit of it, uh, you guys obviously looked great. But it wasn't as if you were just totally 100% dominant for, you know, wire-to-wire -wire type victory. Alma goes on a long drive, but then here's a tip trill interception like right into the red right. zone, right? Where you don't allow them to finish right. even with a field goal or touchdown or any kind of points. Another time, you guys force a fumble down on the sideline. And so it felt like defensively, uh, the offense kind of speaks for itself, right? You don't score 31 right. points on accident. Like that shit takes a very talented offense to go do that. But defensively, it felt like you guys stepped up and made some really timely key plays uh, through that first half, especially. Could you hear a pin drop in that place? I mean, 31 nothing had to just take the wind right out of their sails. Yeah, it was it was uh, it wasn't as loud as you'd think. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously it was like big third downs and stuff, yep. but I mean, really like the obviously like we got a stop on defense, then we drove, but it didn't get points. So it was still like the atmosphere is still good, but then like whatever through the second quarter when we got like a um, when the, that that uh, interception you're talking about, and then yep. later on that fumble, it definitely got quieter. They definitely weren't as like uh, into it. And um, they definitely helped us a lot because we had a lot of fans there on our side. And so, yeah, we were kind of matching the enthusiasm. Um, and that obviously changed when they started, you know, we knew they were a good team. Yeah. Like, they were obviously really good. So that changed when they were starting to make uh, more plays and they started to stop us more um, in the second half. But uh, overall it was not – like, like the there was obviously there's a there's a huge change between like the beginning of the game when everybody was like oh, yeah. ripe and stuff, and then you know ha after halftime especially we came out and it just it was not the same environment at all. Fans travel pretty well over there at Hope. I mean, not too crazy of a yeah. road trip. Yeah, they do. Um, like for our home games, we don't. It's mostly like family. Like we have uh, we have a good amount of students come, but it's usually like people in the area. Yep. And so the like there's no there's not a big difference between like away games and home home games. It's usually like most of the parents come and even a lot of like uh like 
players that don't like make the travel roster yep. come and cool. a lot of parents i saw a lot of parents that like i know of people who weren't of the teammates who weren't traveling but their parents were there oh, so we cool. get a lot of people that come out that's buy-in buy-in to a program and yeah. into a culture and For ideals sure. right they don't just happen sure. to show up there on saturday that's a that's a big commitment from them that says a lot about what you guys have going on down there and uh visiting with alma this off season they had talked about that environment and how they've tried to build that up and make it as uh, yeah. maybe intimidating as possible for teams to come in and yeah, play that even down sure. to details of like timing up the scott walk when they're in the kilts and coming yeah. down to when you guys come off the bus was that organized in that kind of way yeah, I didn't. We didn't see. I didn't see much of it, but okay. they do. I do know that that's how they do things. And like we, were, everybody, like on the team, was excited to play there. Yeah, just because we knew, like homecoming, we knew that it was going to be one of the best atmospheres we get. Like we get to play in, and they did a good job at like that. They they didn't, um, they didn't lack in that department. Like it was yeah. it was awesome. We came out. We happened to come out of the locker room like when they were like about to do the run out. And so, like everybody was cheering, and so it was it was pretty sweet to like like to see all the people there. And we didn't it didn't it wasn't like a bothersome thing. Like it wasn't like we were worried because they had some yeah. people there. It was more like we were all jacked up because especially because they have like a band. Like Hope doesn't have a a band that like plays. I got you. And so being around that and like all they have like all the, like a million different cheerleaders and stuff. So it's like the environment feels like a larger game. And so we were all excited for that. We weren't really like intimidated but we were excited no i hear you anything that can bring more energy more excitement to these kind of games i know uh being down and able to do our first kind of game day show last year that was the sentiment from a lot of people down in the cross was like we're going to be here regardless the fact that we can inject some more enthusiasm and excitement to this right. game already like that makes it all the better uh for you guys now this one Four and zero for the first time since the tigers won a world series that my friend is what <laughs> we call a statistic how awesome right. is that for this group? Talk to me. It's nice. I'm, I mean, we're all pretty excited. I've obviously, I'm obviously a senior, so I've experienced a couple of different starts. And, um, I mean, I know our opponents haven't been the, the greatest compared um, up until Alma, but I think overall just having that, you know, undefeated four games in, we have a try next week. That'll be five. Like, if we can win that, that'll be five and all going into our bye week. So everybody's like, really excited and um you, you you can feel the momentum like in the locker room building that is awesome dude and uh I mean, we're talking about 40 years dude like that is not a small number and so yeah. the fact that this group's able to come together and do that uh, in a program too that I, may i add like it's not like the the seasons between then and now have been like these losing drought type seasons this is a program that has right. a lot of history and tradition and has won some big time football games so the fact you're able to do that even on the on kind of the coattails of all that is is really neat but uh let's talk about you which i'm sure you're just elated and excited to do as, yeah. we, as we step into this program <laughs> but right. we have to simply for the reason uh that you lead the country in rushing touchdowns right now you're tied for fourth in yards and over the last four weeks my friend right here that's what I see right. from you as far as your rushing totals these last four weeks. For those of you listening, my hand is going in an upward trajectory. You continue to climb. You're getting close to matching your season total from last year. What do you attribute that to? Uh, everything. I mean, the uh, like just the opportunity, obviously, first of all, because that's you know you can't can't make anything happen without like having a chance. So, um, being I was kind of rotated with uh, Eli Smith last year. Uh, he's a senior, and so that obviously kind of put me in the position to get most of the reps this year. Yep. And then, I mean, obviously, I'm still mixing in with Tyler a lot, but um, that the opportunity to actually like get in, and um, the coaches to like trust me with that. And then, honestly, just our offensive line. Obviously, it's cliche as a running back, oh, yeah. but everybody they always say that, but it's like true. Like, I think they're one of the best um, in the country by far, and so um, that's honestly what it is. Like that, and it's, it sounds so cliche, but it's like everybody on the offense. Like I think if you if you watch the tape and actually like pay attention to it, mm -hmm. we I would argue that we have the best like fullback in the country, and I would argue that our wide receivers block the best like in oh, the country. Yeah. And it's like not a bias; it's just like literally just watch the tape. Like they they're always blocking downfield; they're always getting nasty, and so the, all of them like playing each each uh, play. Like even though they're all obviously blocking. It's like, uh, that's, that's the reason. That's the reason for any of the success that me or Tyler has had. 
and things are cliche for a reason, my friend. It usually is because right. people say them so often, and, and that is because they are true. So uh, you're very much, I think, on the right track there, and you're saying all the right things. But talk to me about what people need to know. I think you kind of got into it a little bit right there about this Hope team that maybe isn't being talked about enough or maybe even at all. Is it a lot of that buy-in from some of those other guys that contributes uh, maybe to the ground game? What is it about this squad that people need to know? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say you're right on it. I like – Compared to the other teams, um, like here at Hope that I've been a part of, it's like the most. Um, it's the most that everybody's been bought in, and like, are everybody's willing to do what they need to do, regardless of like what the outcome looks like for them. Like each play, every play, every like that ability to have every guy like think that way, it opens up obviously like uh, Hawkins' play calling to like he knows that we're all going to do what we have to do regardless of whether it's like get like get dirty or like be the guy who gets the ball. Like, and you know what I mean? So, um, that, that bill, that's like probably the biggest thing is that like yeah. nobody, nobody cares who scores. Like I had, you said, I have like 10, but like, it's the same. Um, like everybody acts the same regardless of who gets in the end zone. Like everybody acts the same regardless of who makes the play. And I think that's obviously what, like, all teams strive for. And I think that's what we have. And I think we have it, like, well. And so that's where, like, the confidence comes of this year and, like, this team yep. is that we've kind of found the right thing. Characteristics right, of, sure. a, of a really good squad, dude, 100%. Now, conference yeah. play the rest of the way for you guys. What needs to happen this weekend to go 5-0 and or, more importantly, to go 1-0 and on the weekend against uh, a trying squad coming in? Right. So our biggest focus is, like, do we – Last week, like, everybody was locked in. Like, everybody knew how big the game was. And yep. so all what our coaches are, like, stressing and what all the players are stressing is just keep that mentality throughout the rest of the season because we know the caliber of team we just beat with that mentality. And so we – the goal isn't just to, like, survive and win out the rest of the year. It's to, like, play at that level. And so that's the focus right now is staying – building off of that and not, you know, getting any – not, like – losing any of that like focus yeah. and yeah. it's easy to get up for for being the underdog right and stacking the chips right. on your shoulder so to speak to take right. out a top 25 team a team that was in the elite eight last year and a team that talking heads like myself have frankly talked about maybe too much from your perspective right it's easy no. to get up and excited for a game like that no, uh, you're but good. But, Keel, you talked about keeping that same mindset for every game, week in and week out. That's what separates the, those good teams from the great because they're able to keep that mindset. Now, talking about this weekend, too, I think a cool note kind of to close things off here, uh, the Purple Community game, which is something I didn't know too much about. It benefits the Van Andel Institute uh, and their groundbreaking research for cancer, Parkinson's, and other div uh, diseases. Excuse me. It also helps fund internships for HOPE students yeah. at uh, VAI. So um, kind of a... Got a little bit off topic for you, but talk to me about that and kind of the importance of that. It feels like it's a really cool game and an opportunity for you guys. Yeah, so I don't know, like, all the details within okay. it. But I do know that um, it travels um, through certain teams. And so I had, we had it my freshman year, I believe, and now we get to have it again. And so basically what it is is, like, it's a game, obviously, like you said, with the, the focus of playing, like, um, in honor or in memory of someone um, close to you that had – has cancer or has dealt with cancer in the past. And um, usually the, my freshman year, it's the purple games. So usually we buy purple jerseys, um, but we're not doing that this year. Instead, we're just going to have like purple accessories. Okay. And we bought, we like sold, cause you could like you, we had the jerseys and you would buy the Jersey and that that's the money like that we would raise. Yeah. And then you would like um, give the Jersey away. Cause like it's the name is like of the person you're playing for. Of course. And so instead this year, we're just going to, we, we like sold sh a bunch of shirts. Like um, each guy had to sell a bunch of shirts, and then all that money is the money that's getting um, given to them. And then uh, the shirts will have like the last name and stuff. And so we'll just play with our like regular stuff, but it, like all purple accessories. Though I believe they get like uh, shirts, like the uh, fans get shirts and stuff. So it should yeah. be all purpled out. Different way of um, doing it, but obviously there's, you know, same support yeah, same going towards the same cause, same even though maybe on the surface, like you said, it might look different because of the, but right. all of the same energy and focus is still gone yeah. right there. That's, that's really important stuff, yeah. dude. And so, it, it does a good. really good, it does a um, really, really good job. Uh, um, 
like producing the money and having to, I think we can like, I don't know, I could be totally far off, but it was like, usually it was, it started off like trying to get one person to go to like the internship. And now it's at like two or more, I think. And so each year um, that I can remember, like each uh, sport has been like doing really well, um, getting the money together. That's and really so it's kind of like, it's growing to get, yeah. uh, I think the goal obviously is to get the money for research, but then also get as many hope students as we can to internship and stuff. Yeah. Do the research there. That's big. Cause yeah, I mean, there's a lot of teams that do those funders kind of deals, but to fund an internship for an actual student athlete is a cool yeah. angle on that. that I don't yeah. think I've seen a lot of, but um, my man chance. I think that's all I've got for you tonight, brother. I appreciate uh, you putting up with me and uh, thanks for talking some ball. Excited to continue to follow along with you guys and, and continuing. Yes. Right here, brother up, up yes. and up for you. Excited to watch you the rest of the yes. season, my man. Thank you.